The solution to so many of the problems we face today might just be under our nose. Or feet, rather. When FDR said, the nation that destroys its soil destroys itself, he realized just how pivotal a resource the land beneath our feet is in the environmental, economic, and social fabric of our country. Compost acts as a food source, a probiotic, a sponge for the soil underneath it. It makes soil more fertile and efficient and supports the intricate ecosystem that healthy soil keeps. I'm Corey Ames from Grow Ensemble, and in this video, we're going to discuss why composting is so important and share 10 benefits of composting for you, me, and the planet. Take a moment to think about what you had for breakfast this morning. Everything from the strawberries to the extra crispy piece of bacon sources itself back to the soil. The soil literally feeds us. Compost is simply returning the favor. Compost is a soil-like mixture of decaying organic matter and a lively set of microbes that help the decomposition process. The organic materials that make up compost usually include yard trimmings, leaves, mulch, grass clippings, some paper products, food scraps such as raw and cooked fruits, vegetables, grains, eggshells, coffee grounds, in some cases, meat and dairy products. While the impact of compost is profound, the process of composting isn't actually that complex. Composting is actually an easy and manageable way to make a huge difference in the environmental, economic, and social issues that we face today. By composting, we can lower greenhouse gas emissions, regenerate the soil, revitalize water sources, and foster food security. Let's get into these many benefits in much greater detail. First, soil loves compost. Any serious gardener knows that compost is often the first solution to almost any problem that arises in the garden. Compost protects against plant disease and treats nutrient deficiencies. It's the most used soil amendment for farmers and gardeners alike, and for good reason. Compost improves the structure of the soil by adding important nutrients, balancing pH levels, and allowing for better moisture, infiltration, and retention. The beneficial microbes found in compost help to aerate and fertilize the soil. Without these microbes in the soil, most plants wouldn't be able to access the nutrients that they need. Those microbes break down the nutrients plants need and increase the surface area of their roots. Second, compost revitalizes water sources. Compost can hold 5 to 20 times its own weight in water. So, Adding compost to the soil increases the amount of water that is able to penetrate the soil considerably. This is not only great for vegetation, but water infiltration, as more water is to seep all the way down to the impervious rock layer, where it swells up and replenishes local springs, ponds, and lakes. As water moves through compost, soil, and rock layers, the water is filtered by the time it makes it back to our surface water sources. And given that roughly 40% of rainfall can come from these local surface surface water sources, that means compost can play a huge role in promoting rainfall in the area. With more compost, healthier soil, and established plant life, we're able to retain more rainfall where it falls versus that rainfall hitting the ground, bare earth or impervious surfaces, and turning into runoff. Also, since all water eventually makes its way to oceans, compost's ability to filter water as it penetrates the ground means that the water flowing into the ocean ultimately will be cleaner. One of the biggest pollutants in all our waterways, and not just the oceans, is the acidifying fertilizers and other harsh chemicals used in farming. These fertilizers and chemicals lead to algae blooms, dead zones, and fish kills. Using compost decreases the water runoff that brings these chemicals into the ocean and diminishes the need to add these fertilizers and chemical pesticides in the first place. Next, compost controls erosion. We've lost one third of the earth's farmable land within the last 40 years due to erosion and pollution. Most erosion is caused by excess water or flooding. Flooding, generally speaking, occurs because once rainfall hits the ground, there's nothing to catch the water and encourage it to slow down. The worst of this, for example, is completely impervious surfaces, like our many, many parking lots in the United States. However, something similar happens when rainfall hits bare earth or exposed rock. Likewise, nearly impervious, as if rain was falling on a Walmart parking lot, the water hits the ground only to start moving faster wherever gravity takes it. And as more water rushes from higher elevations, it accumulates, and with it comes more force that can take additional soil, what's left of it, with it. 
further stripping the land behind it. Because of compost's ability to retain water, it acts like a sponge and helps with the most important thing we can do in a heavy rain event, slow water down. The rainfall stays where it fell. More water infiltrates the ground and the topsoil to that area stays exactly where it belongs. Number four, composting reduces greenhouse gas emissions. Right now, most food and yard waste is sent to landfills. There, without the proper environment to be composted, they rot releasing methane and carbon dioxide in the process. Organic matter in landfills is the third leading human-related cause of methane emissions in the United States. Methane gas is a greenhouse gas that, conservatively speaking, is 28 times more potent than CO2 in warming up the planet. Public interest nonprofit USPIRG released a report on composting in the U.S., explaining that if all of the food waste and yard trimmings that were landfilled in 2015 had been composted instead, it would have resulted in net negative emissions of 14.2 8 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent, equivalent to taking over 3 million cars off the road that year. By diverting our compostable waste from the landfills and back into the soil, we're decreasing our own methane and carbon outputs for ourselves and our community. Number five, next, carbon sequestration. Carbon sequestration is the process by which carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere and stored in a solid or liquid form. Compost also helps to sequester carbon dioxide. As we mentioned before, compost is home to a variety of beneficial microbes. Plants need those microbes to absorb nutrients in the soil. To keep those microbes around, plants release carbohydrates from their roots to attract and feed those microbes. Plants get carbohydrates from the CO2 in the air and water from their roots through photosynthesis. And together with these carbohydrates, carbohydrates or sugars, microbes who eat them create humus, part of the soil that retains soil structure, nutrients, and moisture. The humus is also part of soil that's largely responsible for keeping recently stored carbon dioxide from that photosynthesis process beneath the soil. Carbon once in the atmosphere can be stored underneath healthy soil. As was explained in the wonderful book, Regeneration, Ending the Climate Crisis in One Generation, Cal Berkeley researchers found that if you applied less than an inch of compost to just 5% of California's total rangelands, you would sequester enough carbon from the atmosphere to equal the emissions of 6 million cars. Number six, composting saves on disposal costs. Trash is expensive, specifically its transportation and storage. From 205 billion a year in 2010 to a projected 375 billion by 2025, global costs of waste disposal are increasing. At the same time, composting has been shown to decrease landfill costs on a local level. Middlebury College, the Mariners T-Mobile Park, and Joint Base Lewis McCord are a few of the many institutions that have boasted savings between 100,000 to 300,000 for their annual disposal costs just by implementing composting programs. There's a lot of money to be saved with compost and also a lot of money to be made. Number seven, food waste becomes valuable. Here in the US, we waste between 30 to 40% of our total food supply. That's a ton of food. <laughs> 40 million tons to be exact, translating to about $161 billion worth of food wasted every year. Composting transforms what literally would have been thrown into the trash into an incredibly valuable resource, one that will generate more food and revenue. By completing the food cycle, garbage becomes black gold. The global compost market grew from 6.82 billion in 2022 to 7.4 billion in 2023, and it would seem that demand for compost will, or should, continue to grow. Composting plants have also been shown to create more jobs, twice as many jobs, than other disposal facilities, such as landfills or incineration sites. And number eight, lower costs, better food from farms. By using compost, farmers and gardeners spend less money on expensive fertilizers and pesticides, water and irrigation, and can use that cost savings for expanding their production capacities. More than that, fields that use compost have been shown to have higher yields than those that don't. This means more crops to sell and more money to be made for farmers. Likewise, compost means healthier, stronger, and more resilient crops versus crops grown with the help of synthetic amendments and pesticides. Because because of industrialized agriculture, soil across the country has lost much of its nutritional content. If the soil lacks essential nutrients and is sprayed constantly with harmful chemicals, the food that grows there will reflect that. Depleted soils have led to less nutrient-dense foods, and 280 million pounds of glyphosate, which is Roundup, being sprayed annually on U.S. crops. Glyphosate, a chemical compound, which is set to be banned in the EU starting in 2024. Compost makes nutrient-rich soil, 
and the microbes in compost make those nutrients more bioavailable for plant roots to absorb. Farmers known to use compost, like those in the regenerative agricultural space, are producing more nutritionally rich fruits and vegetables. Number nine, composting reduces landfills. Our landfills are filling up. Not to add to your list of concerns, but the U.S. is quickly facing a shortage of landfill capacity, with some projections saying that we'll reach the brim within the next 20 years. And the crazy thing is that almost half of all landfill waste is compostable. We could save a ton of space and time by composting our organic waste instead of sending it to the landfills. Landfills greatly affect the communities closest to them. Researchers at the University of Colorado found that there's a 12% increase of congenital disabilities in children born to families living within a mile of landfills. Also, landfills can decrease the home values of nearby homes by anywhere from 3% to 12%, depending on the landfill size. And surprise, minorities in low-income areas are the most likely to find themselves host to landfill sites. Composting instead of dumping makes communities more beautiful healthy. This brings us to our final benefit of composting, a regenerative outlook for a regenerative future. Composting is part of a whole regenerative system of thought that changes how we interact with our world and how we solve the problems in front of us. Nothing is wasted in nature. Everything returns back into the soil to nurture new life. Composting mimics nature and closes the loop. It's an active step in ushering in a regenerative way of living. To say that compost is only valuable in your garden is missing the forest for the trees or the food scraps for the heat. There are many ways to start composting right away, many of which we'll share with you in future videos. If you'd like to learn more about the many benefits of composting and verse yourself with the research we conducted behind this video, be sure to visit the link in the description at growensemble.com. And lastly, if you wanna learn more about the art of living and working sustainably at the intersection of business, nature, and philosophy, be sure to sign up for my newsletter at growensemble.com backslash newsletter.